Welcome back from that Zerg vs. Terran analysis segment back here, and we are going to be talking a bit about your team, Team Ascension. Team that's actually been around for a long time uh, under different names, and you've actually been on the team for a little bit now. So tell us a little bit about Team Ascension. Well, I've been on Team Ascension for over two years now, and they're a really friendly team. They're supportive of the players. If you want to go to events, they usually can help you out if you've been on it for a while. Yeah, I enjoy the team a lot. And I also understand that they recently opened up a team house, actually. Uh, is Have you had any interest in actually going there or spending some time practicing there, maybe during the summer when you're off of school? I would go, but I am, I'm taking a summer semester as well at school, so I won't be able to do that this year. But um, yeah, that's definitely something I can look into doing in the future. You get some pretty good uh, training and custom games played with them? Yeah, usually we, we just have a big Skype group with all the A-team players, and you can just post there if you want to practice, and then anyone else just says, okay, yeah, I'll practice you, and then you just hop on and start playing. So what percentage of the time would you say you spend practicing on the ladder versus practicing in custom games? Probably the majority on ladder, maybe like 10-15% custom games, both with my teammates and with other people I know are pretty good practice partners. Do you wish that you were practicing more custom games? I don't think it really matters. Like the only point where it's really useful to practice in custom games is if you're practicing something specific. Mm -hmm. But if you're just generally practicing your all your matchups, slider is fine usually. Yeah. Do you have any rivals in the scene that you try and compete with? Probably Massa would be my biggest rival because I play him a lot in uh, Torcrafts and he, he always gets first place. So I've been trying to not come down for a while now. So I'd say he's probably my biggest rival. Uh, Moss yeah. is pretty good. What do you feel has been your biggest challenge as a player so far um, in trying to make a name for yourself in the scene? Honestly, probably that I haven't qualified for WCS yet because that's like the big thing. Like you qualify for WCS and people start recognizing you. And if you don't do that, then it's really hard to get recognized unless you qualify for some other tournament. But WCS is like the main one. It's probably the easiest, honestly, to qualify for. And you mentioned, we talked a little bit about this past season of WCS. What's been holding you back from qualifying in any of last year or the year before that? Honestly, then I just wasn't good enough. <laughs> I've been uh, practicing a lot recently and I've been improving. So uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be ready for the next WCS to qualify. How much time have you been spending practicing? The majority of, the, of my free time that I can spare when I'm not studying or just doing other things that I need to do. Well, let's talk a bit about your Zerg versus Protoss then, because I want to hear how exactly you play this matchup. In ZVP, I usually open as greedy as possible and I try to do some sort of uh, three base timing. And if that doesn't work good, I usually either go like a meta switch or swarm host or some other like specific composition to counter what my opponent's doing. So when you say open up as greedy as possible, I assume you mean stuff like three hatch before pool, skimping on early zerglings, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I usually go 10 scope, three hatch before pool. I think it's safe versus pretty much everything, and yeah, it's just the best opener. And you're not concerned about opinion. any of the kind of uh, early aggression a pro scum player can throw out, like four gate or three gate aggression with just a lot of zealots? I don't know. I haven't played very much of that like lately. I think it's fallen out of style because Zergs have learned how to defend it, from my experience at least. Yeah. So I'm not worried about that. So you mentioned that you like to go for the big three base timing. And is that normally just because you are prepared for a two base all in in case it comes, but otherwise you just try and focus on denying a Protoss player's third? No, I usually try to scout really well because with a lot of the two base solons, you got to cut at sub three base drone count or you'll just die to them. Where when I try to do a big three base timing, I try to drone up like the full three base saturation. That way I can produce uh, units for a consistent amount of timing, keep the pressure going on or transition easier. So you're not as concerned about letting the Protoss player grab their third? Oh, no, not at all. You can't really rent it anyway if they're, if they're good with their force fields. You can't deny it until later on when you're doing your actual three base timing so do you would you say that you uh, struggle a little bit against players that also just kind of play greedy against you i that's what the majority of the pro dos i've played i don't think i struggle against it but i think that's definitely the hardest style to play against usually two base lines i don't have too much trouble with gotcha and how do you feel about the really really late stages of a uh, pvz i don't usually do swarmos too much so it's a bit harder to play late game ZVP for me because uh, if you're not like really confident with Swarmos, like you just can't play a super late game in my opinion. If you have to describe one strength and one weakness in the matchup, what would those two things be? I have solid Mako and react to, like reaction against two base timings and three base timings, but um, I, I'm not too confident with my Swarmos. So 
like super like him if they just turtle off on three bases and take a fourth like that that's when it gets hard all right cool well i'm looking forward to seeing the zerg versus protoss of yours ladies and gentlemen don't go anywhere it's game time zerg versus protoss Hello everyone, welcome to the Zerg vs. Protoss. I'm joined here once again by Brandon. We're gonna jump man? in, introducing the players. Yeah, I mean, you got my name right. I I decided to get it right for once. But we're yeah, gonna be- use my actual name though. Yeah, I mean, I like to call you Brandon, so. It's sure, okay. yeah. I mean, but, I like to call this Protoss player up at the top right hand corner, the red Protoss player, Soul. And his opponent, special player of the week. It's not his birthday, but it's better. We have Bio Ice. You like that? I I don't get it. Uh, I mean, it's not his birthday, but he's on Breaking Out, so that's better. Okay, I see. Hey, there we go. Yeah, Man, that makes sense. I thought I had a, such a good one for you. I thought you were going to be so I thought happy. It was, I, th I think it's clever. You I'm didn't just even a get it. <laughs> I'm just a little bit slow on the uptake, man. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was looking forward to doing Soul's intro. Aww. Um, yeah, I mean, I was gonna ask him about his ring. Soul ring? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. See? Yeah. See? I'm getting. I'm getting the jokes. I'm starting to. I mean, you didn't really get it. I had to explain it to you before the game. I mean, it was. Yeah. <laughs> you may have already made that joke before. That may be the reason uh, yeah, why I, totally I got did. it. Well, I mean, I didn't actually explain the entire joke. I just said, you know, what it was. I'm not, I and mean, we're not telling everyone what it is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you probably knew. I'm pretty confused, but we're going to move on anyways. Because yeah. we got a gateway expansion coming down from Seoul. And uh, that does mean that this hatch first is going to be relatively safe from BioIce. Yep. That also means this gateway expansion is going to be pretty safe, too. It yeah. goes both ways. <laughs> It does go both ways, that's true. Um, yeah, um, pretty greedy openings. Yeah, Biowise most likely, I mean, he's not grabbing a gas geyser, or actually, he's he's droning up, I think, before even planting down that spawning pool, so he's definitely feeling very, very good. He's, oh my god, actually, no, it's th uh, three hatch before it's pool. just three hatch before yeah. pool. No What's... scout. Three hatch gas before pool? Yeah, You're this... crazy. This is this is like actually super duper greedy because he hasn't actually oh. scouted until just now like that the Nexus was going down this late. He didn't scout that there wasn't a wall up. He basically kind of did this somewhat blindly. Um yeah, and basically I, just took a risk. I know what it is. I figured it out. I, I looked into the past and figured it out. Uh they played before on ladder, and he knows. <laughs> 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 that is actually entirely possible. I know a lot of players do kind it's, of shift their yeah. game plan uh, based on that. I, but, if I were to guess, that's what I'd say why he did it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I right. think that's actually a totally fair guess. Uh, but regardless, I mean, he's going to get away with it. There's not a whole lot that Soul can do. He can, Soul can try and go for some kind of early three-gate aggression or something. I mean, he's can, like, try and wall in uh, with the gateways and just put on some big pressure, three or four gate aggression, but I know that Bioice has said he's not really concerned or really afraid of that kind of aggression. Okay. He's a he's a a bold one, we'll go with. <laughs> not afraid of anything. So that's it's interesting. Um I'm usually pretty afraid of Protoss aggression because you know I play Protoss and like PvP's a nightmare, so <laughs> different different kind of aggression there, Brandon. Yeah. Sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless, so you, you see Sentry on the way here for uh, for Soul. Uh, yep. Pretty safe here, no no stalker. If you want to be like aggressive, you go for like a stalker, mm -hmm. and then you can go pressure. But he's just not even doing that. Yeah, he's chrono boosting out the Sentry, which I do find a little bit interesting. I'm not sure if that's just <laughs> because he wants to try and pick off like any scouting overlords or something, or if he has something yeah. else in mind. He's also grabbing both of his gas geysers relatively early on. So I'm starting to think this is going to be a tech play, but yeah, the Chronobus on the Sentry, I'm not too sure what that was about. That one confuses me as well. Usually you don't Chrono Boost your Sentry or Chrono Boost your tech when you're doing something like this. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if he wants to go for a Blink push or something, you want to save a bunch of Chrono Boost for Blink. And before that, you want to Chrono the hell out of your Nexus so you can get your yeah. probe count enough so that you can actually do your all-in or your, you know, your big tech play. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. He's Chronoing his Nexus right now. <laughs> Supply blocked. 
is Biowise. What happened, dude? Uh, well, he lost the Overlord. So, I mean, oh, okay. it kind of makes sense. He, he's got a couple finishing up, so it's not too bad. Yeah. Finally starting up that Lair Tech. Uh, a little mm. bit further delayed, I think, than sometimes we end up seeing Zerg players do that, but should be totally okay. He's going to be getting on the yep. Roach Warren, and uh, I would say that Biowise... He scouted out to see, like, okay, you're not, like, gateway all ending me or something. But, I mean, has he really seen a whole lot? I don't really know. It looks like maybe an early third from Soul, but there's not really a lot of information besides just... There's a lot of sentries in the Mothership Core. Yeah, actually, all he said, or all he saw when he suicided his Overlord was that there's a gateway building. Like, he, yeah. he saw nothing after that. Nothing's actually come up, but what if there were, like, three more gateways in there? <laughs> yeah, what if they were just further back in? You never know, man. Yeah. You never know. They're maybe just well hidden. But regardless, he does end up finding them, uh, or figuring out what's going on. I think he uh, saw the probe moving out with that overlord above the natural, so he should have a good idea that there's probably a third going up, and it seems just like by the fact that he's droning up, he's getting up of his evolution chambers, he's probably reacting appropriately. Yep. This is a, a game where both players are going to be really, really greedy. First one to blink is probably going to lose. Like. You need to pressure as a Protoss, but you don't want to commit to anything. And I yeah. think if you do at this point, you're probably just dead. Yeah. You need to play these games really in a different way than you play a lot of other games, uh, especially as a Zerg. I think the Protoss can probably do some aggression at some point if he wants, you know, just do a little bit of pressure. But if Zerg makes any units and doesn't need them, it's just wasted and uh, he'll fall behind. Yeah, it's not quite as bad as it used to be, I would say. Uh, like, a lot of Zerg players have found that, you know what, if I have these units made for the defense of my third, I could just go use them to pressure your third and try and deny that. Yeah. But I do agree, like, I think it's getting on the later side. Once the cannon is already up and well defended by the gateway pylon wall in, it becomes yeah. a lot more difficult. And I actually really like yeah, what yeah. Uh, Soul did over here, just, like, forcing out some extra units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should be doing this with a pro or as a protoss. Like you, you can recall, man. You can just leave. Yeah, exactly. You can just leave now. <laughs> there was a there was a point where this was risky, but now nah, you just leave. <laughs> All right. Well, it's you easy. said the first one to blink will lose, but ooh, we do have ooh. blink being a research right now, and I don't <laughs> think it's exactly like a losing situation, uh, because you know he's finished yeah. up plus one weapons, he's got a toilet yeah. capsule, he can start on plus two, and this could set up for a really nice three base blink timing. Yeah, this is the pretty standard uh, plus two weapons blink. This is a little old school, but it's still good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you don't open with a star gun or anything, it's just one of your easier tech or, or um, routes to go and transition into the late game. From here, you can pretty much do whatever you want. He can go claw stuff if he needs to. He can be cool and go Templar. <laughs> I doubt he will, though, because no one does. <laughs> I just want Templar to be a thing. <laughs> yeah, I wish so, too. Unfortunately, uh, storms just don't do the damage they sometimes feel like they need to versus roaches. I got it. I know how to bounce the game right you take out Colossi and you just bring back Hedera and Amulet. Balance. <laughs> oh my god. That is, disgu that is a disgusting <laughs> thought, actually. As yeah, a Protoss player who would benefit from that, that is a disgusting thought. Yeah, I, I know, right? <laughs> oh. I want it so bad. I just I... want Hedera and Amulet back. You can even take out Robotics. I don't even care. That building's stupid. Well, just make storms reveal. Well, Roach is coming in over here to the natural expansion, uh, trying going after the pylon, but actually now finding that he can maybe get on top of these uh, sentries. Oh my God, Burrow was actually researched as well, so he's gonna be able to unburrow right on top of all these sentries. There's not enough stalkers to really utilize Blink all that well here. I love the emergency force fields that every Protoss <laughs> knows exactly what's going on. They're like, uh, yep. uh, force fields. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh God, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, I think he just like wins works. here. Yeah, I mean, he's killed the entire army, he killed every single sentry, he's just sitting on top of the robo base, or uh, robotics facility, so he can't even, like, pull immortals to try to hold this off. No. So many probes are going down right now, like, there's just not enough warpins to deal with this kind of army. It's so big, and it's got decent upgrades, it's at 1-1, the Protoss are, <laughs> oh, maybe that's what happened, he hit right before plus two weapons. Yeah, that definitely helped quite a bit. Uh, Dark Shrine is gonna finish up, but... I mean, what are you going to do? He's going to warp in three DTs somewhere out on the map right now. Uh, yeah, nope. he's going to... Yeah, he's, oh, he he's going to he's gonna be able to get them over to, like, the main base. But look at this. Bioice is already prepared for this. He's got the Spore Callers at every one of his bases, uh, except for his fourth expansion. So I wonder if these Dark Arch or these uh, Temple are going to become Archons and really screw me up like they did last time. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't seem like it. They'll probably just die. Um, yeah. One of them has already gone down. The other two look like they might get away. No, the overshoot here. 
Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I thought he hit whole position on him. He's like, no, you die. <laughs> no, no, don't. Stop not breaking. even. Not even gonna happen. But uh, regardless, <laughs> that is gonna be it for our Zerg versus Protoss. We're gonna hop into the analysis segment with him once again, and uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back from that Zerg versus Protoss, everyone. I'm back here with Bio Ice, and we're gonna be going over the analysis of this game. Bio Ice, break it down for us. All right, so so far this game, I just ten scudded. I figured it out he was going Nexus Gate, so I'm just going three after four pool because it's completely safe in the situation. And um, I'm just gonna try to figure out what he's doing and uh, join up my three bases. All right, so I scouted him moving over to take his third base, so I'm just adding on my double leap of chambers now. I'm finishing up droning. I'm going to add on a second return in a second, get uh, Broach movement speed and tunneling claws, and get ready for my true base timing. So I'm just moving in with my attack now. Um, I'm poking at the front a bit, and then his, it forces his army out, so now I'm just going to try to kill that. I see that he doesn't have very many units, so I'm just going to go right in and try to unburrow on top of them, and I get that off. So, I kill pretty much his entire army here, and that's uh, the game immediately. Now, did you actually go for the burrow play because you saw something of his? Like, you saw like the high sentry count and thought, oh, I can just burrow under these units? Or was it just, that was your game plan all along? Um, well, I did it because he took a fast third base, mostly. Mm -hmm. It was my game plan for him taking a third base. Okay. Because, because you can transition pretty well off this build into uh, other things. You can just saturate up before to take the gases. Yeah, sounds good. Well, thank you very much, BioEyes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that analysis segment. We're going to be going back to the interview. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.